All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so it's been a while since we worked on a two-stroke again. Uh, not as much time in, I guess, your viewpoint. It's only been a couple of weeks. Uh, but for me, uh, it's been maybe a month. So I want to do some more two-stroke stuff. So I ordered this little guy here. This is an hour meter tachometer. Uh, it's pretty cheap. I think this was like uh, 13 bucks, if I recall. Somewhere between 10 and 15. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I want to see what uh, these little two strokes are spinning. Um, I think that'd be some useful information to have. So, uh, first thing I need to do is get a two stroke bite put back together. So, I'm going to take the engine off the shelf up there and put it back on the bike over there. And uh, hopefully, we can get this done in one episode. See you guys in a second. All right, here we are back at it with the Murray. Um, as you can see, still have a carburetor and ignition and tank and everything on this. Still have the 20 inch rear wheel. I'm really curious to see what kind of RPM the motor turns with that smaller wheel. Um, so I think we're gonna leave that on uh, for now. Um, but yeah, time to uh, get the motor put back on. All right, there we go. We have our two-stroke engine mounted up. I got some blue Loctite on all the motor mount bolts. So we'll give that 24 hours to cure up. And then uh, in the meantime, I'll go ahead and tighten up our carburetor screw there and hook up our ignition and our chain. All right, so I went ahead and I got everything hooked up this engine is ready to rock and roll we have our clutch adjusted and functional and everything's working chain tightened uh, next i'm just going to do a few more maintenance things i am going to add a little bit more oil for safety sake right now i'm running about 40 to 1. Um, i'm gonna bump that up to 25 to 1 and see if that works or if i just end up fouling out a lot of spark plugs um, and then I'm going to brush on some bar and chain oil onto the chain because uh, that's what I got for the time being. So I'm going to do that and then we'll go ahead and uh, get that tachometer installed. All right, so I got our fuel up to 25 to 1 mix ratio with uh, Polaris full synthetic oil. That should give us a little more protection for uh, meltdowns on high RPM. And then I also... Uh, went and oiled up the chain with some nice tacky uh, bar and chain oil. Uh, so that's all good to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, install that tachometer. All right, so here's our tachometer. It just has an internal non-serviceable battery, probably like a watch battery, I'd imagine. And then this little wire that you wrap around the spark plug lead. Uh, so. It just says unpack and attach the unit to the location where it can be easily read. So I'm just going to uh, zip tie through these holes here onto the handlebar. And then it says wrap three or four turns of the end of the wire around the spark plug wire. So I'm going to go with four turns because I'm guessing this has a pretty weak ignition system. Um, and then it says it'll show the accumulated hours which I guess we don't really have any serviceable things here to worry about, like oil changes. So that's not a big deal. But uh, we want to set up the tachometer. So it says when we set this up, we're going to press and hold the S1 button for four seconds. And that'll display number 01, which is what we need, because then the spark plug fires... Nope, that's not what we need, because spark plug fires twice per revolution. We need once per revolution, because we have one cylinder and a two-stroke engine, so it fires every time the crankshaft goes around once. If you have a four-stroke engine, you need to set it to once every other revolution, because uh, if assuming it's a single, because then you would be firing for every two rotations of the crank and one rotation of the cam, and this is based off the crank speed. So we're going to set this up for O2, once per revolution. Okay, so I have four coils of wire evenly spaced under here. I have it taped because it's pretty cold weather here right now, and uh, it just kept trying to uncoil. So maybe once the temperature heats up from the engine, or I don't know, 
in six to eight months from now outside, uh, then I can take that tape off. But it's around there and it's around part of the spark plug wire that is well shielded. It cannot come in contact with any metal on the tip of the wire, so keep that in mind. Um, and then the instructions just say to coil the rest of this up and do not cut the wire. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I got this uh, installed. Wires just coiled up over here. Um, so now we're going to set this. Um, it just says to push and hold S1 for about four seconds. And then we're going to wait until that says two and then let go. There we go. Now we're all set for a single cylinder, two stroke engine. And uh, it should flash a few times. And then I think, yep, now we're set. Now uh, when I run this, it should record the hours and it should also uh, give me an accurate RPM, which will be really interesting to see with the two or the uh, 20 inch wheel. Um, and then, yeah, maybe eventually we'll put the uh, old 26 inch back on there and you can see what the RPM difference is between the two. Uh, but for now, we're just going to wait until tomorrow uh, when it is one light outside and you can see what I'm doing and two uh, when we have our uh, Loctite cured. So I'll catch you guys then. Okay, so I was just noticing this while I was standing here. See if I can get it all in one frame. Look at how much bigger the four-stroke bike is compared to the two-stroke one. This is like time and a half larger. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know if this is showing up really well with the lens, but this bike is tiny compared to the length of this bike and the height of its handlebars. Oh, this thing looks so sick. Waiting on parts for that. There's going to be some videos coming out soon. But yeah, back to the two-stroke. All right, we got our hour meter tachometer. Let's go for a ride. Turn our fuel on here. And choke is already up. Give this a couple of blips. All right, let's go test this thing out. See what kind of RPMs we're turning. Oh man, I washed my helmet before. And uh, so I could see out of the visor because it had a bunch of dead bugs, but now the water is evaporating and I'm fogging up. Oh. Try that again. Oh. Oh. There we go. Oh, it's cold blooded. First time this engine's ran in a couple of months, though. I'm just running the throttle with one hand and choke with the other. I think we're pretty good here. All right, we are turning. Uh, oh wow, this revs a lot more than I thought. This is 4,700 RPM or so. That seems to be right around where it likes to sit, right? At like 4,800 to five grand. Wow. Kind of surprised actually. I guess that explains why they're buzzy. I wonder what I was turning on that other one then when I really had it revved up. Holy smokes. That might have been more like 10,000 RPM. That explains some things. And this is where we get really buzzy. Yep, and that's about 6,000 RPM is what it peaked at. So not much of a range 
of what these can handle. Not really comfortable until 4,000 RPM and gets too buzzy at 6,000 RPM. Interesting. Yep, that's about exactly it. 4,000 to 6,000 RPM. Well, I think uh, we'll go, uh, I'll do a run without the camera, see what kind of RPM or what speed we're running in relation to that RPM, and then uh, I think we'll try the other wheel. Oh, I do want to see idle. So idle's actually a little high too. Huh. Yeah, idle's around 1600. Doesn't sound like 1600. But we got one spark per revolution, that's what it's set to. Yeah, okay. All right, welcome back. So I just got back from a speed test and uh, turns out the comfortable cruising speed of around that 4,800 to uh, 5,000 RPM, that was about um, 17 miles an hour at 5,000 RPM. That's what it maxed out at. So with a 20 inch wheel and 44 tooth sprocket, that's the RPM you're gonna be turning most of the time. Um, and then if I really pushed it, went all the way, uh, I got 7,500 RPM out of it and it felt really sketchy uh, <laughs> for the engine. And with the 20 inch wheel and the 44 tooth sprocket, I was turning about uh, yeah, it was about 7,500 RPM and 24 miles an hour. So about 25 tops with the 20 inch wheel. Uh, and with, I don't, uh, I'm not going to reinstall the uh, 26 inch wheel because I actually am just fine with those figures for just like the little in town stuff I do most of the time. If I want to go on a longer trip, I'll swap the wheel over. Um, but yeah, basically before it was 35 miles an hour was its absolute peak. So if you're going from a 26 down to a 20 with the same sprocket, uh, that's about your loss, about 10 miles per hour. You can figure out the percentages, 30%-ish gear reduction. So that 17, uh, if we were to bump that up to a 26, that's probably more like 22-ish miles an hour, maybe 21. Um, so yeah, there you go. That That is the gearing. And now we know uh, those little two strokes are actually working pretty hard to pull us around. Uh, yeah, I was really surprised that its comfortable range was four to 5,000 RPM. And I was also really surprised that uh, that it, it only runs well for about 2,000 RPM out of the box. Uh, I'm sure there's mods you can do Everybody seems to want to do mods on these. I might do some eventually, um, but yeah, it's got a pretty low, uh, comfortable RPM range. Not low as in towards the bottom, as in narrow RPM range. Uh, but yeah, that's enough of me rambling. That's my little scientific findings. I think the tachometer was definitely uh, some good and needed information to have and a good mod to do. And I looked it up as like a... 11 bucks uh, that I paid for it. So super cheap, definitely worth saving your engine to have that uh, gauge on there. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time.